Okay, let's try this again. I'm now on my phone. So um, I was trying to do um, Facebook Live on my iPad, but I think that the microphone might not be as good as on the phone. So let's give this a go. Can you hear me okay? I hope everybody who was on there before is able to come back and join me again. Um, sorry about that. But I guess it's really good that we're practicing because it gives us a chance to just work out all the kinks. So today I wanted to talk about why creativity matters. And if you've seen me or seen my videos, uh, you are probably aware that creativity is really important to me, that I just think that's a really important part of living our lives. And um, it took me a while to really come to a place of being able to embrace that. Uh, when I was growing up, it seemed like creative type of things like art or music were always the extras that were given after you got the other work done. And I remember as a small child, uh, oh, hi, Sarah. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining us, me. Um, I'm talking about why I think creativity matters. And this is my first Q&A for Facebook Live. I tried it on my iPad and kind of bombed on that, so I came back on my phone. So let's see how this works. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. If you can't, please let me know. But um, when I was a young child, I remember, you know, everybody was talking about what they wanted to do when they grew up, and I said I wanted to be an artist and a poet. And my father said, get a real job. Now, I know that now, as an adult, um, what he was really addressing was his own self because he indeed, oh, thank you, Sarah, glad you can hear me. He indeed was an artist, but growing up in the ghettos of Pittsburgh, he decided that he needed to be a businessman to make a lot of money. And so that's what he wanted me to do too, was be a business person. So, you know, it took me years and years to really work through all of that. Um, and but, you know, the universe, God, whatever, was so faithful because um, here I am today doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing, and I really believe that's true. One of the reasons I think that creativity is so important is because we find our authentic voice in the creative process, in the creative language, because the language of creativity, whether it be storytelling or art or poetry or music or cooking wonderful meals or painting or accounting, which is done with, you know, a mind that's open to all sorts of wonderful ways of figuring it out. These are all ways that creativity can work, but our creative language is not just using our heads, but it's a language of the heart. And that's where our authenticity can really come forth. And um, in the writing classes that I have taught, in the storytelling classes that I have taught, in the art classes that I have taught. I taught at a cancer center and also for the bereaved for a number of years. Um, it's so important to find the language which we can speak beyond our words. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes words get to be kind of cumbersome. And so to speak the language of creativity is just awesome. To take a pen and put it on a piece of paper and say, right now I am and not to worry about what comes out, not to worry about all the commas or to worry about the punctuation, but just allow that free flow. It's amazing the language of your heart will begin to speak. Um, there's so many different processes that I have used in allowing creativity to come out. Um, and there, it's just wonderful. And people are always so surprised. They always often say, I can't believe I wrote that, or I can't believe I drew this, or I can't believe I created this. But it's because it's a part of them that has been waiting to be invited. So, let's see. Barbara Dom is viewing your video now. Tap to invite her to join your video as a guest. Sure. You're welcome to come here, Barbara. Um, I'm not sure about the guest thing, but I'll invite you. You're, you don't have to be a guest, you're my friend. Anyhow, hi, Gigi. Oh, this is great. So anyhow, if anybody has any questions, please jump up and ask. This is, uh, this is me just trying to pull it all together. So, um, hi, Gigi.
oh, this is great. I've just been talking about why I think creativity is so important. And Barbara, are you viewing now? You're okay to be in. I'm not sure why it said invite you as a guest, but anyhow. Um, uh, one of the things too that I think that creativity is so important in is because, you know, as a culture, we've lost a lot of our storytelling ways. We've lost a lot of the ways of encouraging. Oh, good, Barbara. Hi. We've lost a lot of the ways of just allowing children and adults to enter into a place of freedom. And creativity gives us a lot of freedom. Um, of course, there are rules that, you know, we're taught. Um, I'm going to be sharing my story. I'm tired of trying to paint like Sally Waterman. I've been working on that video series. I'll probably be sharing that next week. But um, it's actually, I am in Palm Desert, California, where I live. I'm not sure what's going on with the inviting people. Um, I'm not sure if you need to be invited. I think because you're part of this group, you're just automatically welcome, right? So anyhow, but um, one of the things that I have learned is that great freedom comes with creativity. And when you, hi, Susan, when you set up an environment um, that's welcome and safe, people will come in and they'll say usually, oh, I don't know how to write very well, or I don't know how to draw. I don't know how to this. I don't know how to that. Because we're taught to use all these disclaimers. We're taught that um, drawing is meant to look like a photograph and that, um, you know, to paint, it's meant to look like whatever. But I teach that it's really important for each person to have their own voice. And my voice sounds different than your voice. And so my expression, of course, is going to be different than your expression. And I think that's really a powerful thing because it enables each one of us to have our own unique personality, our own unique identity, and we get to know each other in that way. So does anybody have any questions? This is kind of fun, but it's a little strange for me. Um, but I think that we'll probably all get used to it. I've really enjoyed this. We are unique. Absolutely, Gigi. Oh, Gigi, I loved your little smurfs and the little glasses the other day. Oh, you just had me laughing. That was so fabulous, just out of the blue. And I don't really know you very well. And all of a sudden, here comes this, this uh, Facebook Live with that. That was just wonderful. Very wonderful. Um, one of the other reasons that I think creativity matters, too, is because, you know, we have, it's almost like we have this whole, <laughs> Gigi, I love that. We have this whole, you know, we're kind of like the tip of the iceberg. And underneath, of, underneath us are these wonders, these wonders of just beauty. Oh, hi. Hi from Australia. Hi, Edwina. Um, but we have these wonders within us. And when we allow our creativity to come up, we also are allowing our voice to be heard and not that part of us that says, oh, you're supposed to act like this or you're supposed to act like that. We all need to experience a freedom in expression. And, you know, that doesn't mean being nasty or mean. It just means being able to wear on the outside in some places. I mean, you know, um, I worked at a hospital in a cancer center and I worked with the bereaved for a number of years. And, you know, of course I had to um, act appropriate. But I also got to be me. And, oh, I love this one. Barbara's asking, how can people get over the fear of not being able to be creative? You know, I have had so many people say to me, oh, but you're so creative, Annie. You are just know how to do all that, and I don't. Um, I believe that a big part of that is just to be in a situation where you feel safe, whether that's being on your own or in a small group of people where you feel safe that whatever you do is going to be just fine. And then we build from there. Um, I've known people who, well, just last week I was in a musical group that I get together with and a gentleman there said, oh, I was told when I was a child that I should never sing out loud because I don't have a very good voice. And I said, well, we're not singing, we're toning, which is where you just almost hum and, you know, um, and I said, we're toning, and this isn't singing. So you could just let 
you know, a sound come out, a beautiful sound that goes with the music that we're playing. Well, he did. And I said, see, you're just fine. And whoever told you you couldn't sing was wrong. And I said, there's nobody here who's going to come along and say, you can't sing or you shouldn't sing because we're just all in this together. So I think it really makes a really big difference is to be with others who are encouraging, but also to very lovingly um, allow yourself to be there without criticizing yourself. I'm just going to try this. I'm just going to give this a chance. Um, there's been times in my life when I started something new and it was very scary to me. So I said to myself, this is a practice one. This one doesn't really count. <laughs> And that just helped me so much because I think when we grow up with a lot of criticalness towards art, towards creativity, we're scared to try it. We think it's something for everybody else but us. But I would just encourage you to step out and give it a try. Sarah says, safety does matter. I used to, I used to use art and poetry in my parenting groups. I'm looking to do it again in my future groups. Creating that safe space can be hard, though. Yes, it can. Um, and Deanne says, being creative yourself can do amazing things. My daughter has been dyeing her hair pink. The director of the play she is in told her that is why she was chosen for the specific part. Wow, that's really cool. Good for that director. You know, I mean, he had the, the understanding and the eyes to really see who she was. Wow, wow, yeah. But, you know, when I would lead a group, I would always put down guidelines. I wouldn't call them rules. But um, one of the rules was we're not fixing each other in this group. The second one was um, each person is allowed to express themselves in an appropriate manner. It was all, you know, I mean, you couldn't use, like, you couldn't sit there and swear a blue streak in the midst of some of these groups. It just would not have been appropriate. And it would have made some people feel really uncomfortable. But, um, you know, I would just set up guidelines and I'd say we're all here to learn together. Um, you may have already had more experience in whatever it was. I taught native flute. And I said, you may have had more experience in playing the native flute than others. Somebody might be a rank beginner and somebody else might have had some experience. But that doesn't make one person better than the other. It just means you've walked this road a little bit longer. Bye, Gigi. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, you know, allowing a level playing ground and really letting people know that there's a certain respect that's really needed and not only respecting ourselves but respecting others too um sometimes in the midst i remember in this one writing class i used to teach and i i'm actually going to be doing it again i'm creating a course teaching healing words for the bereaved um people would say, oh, I can't read this because it's not good enough. And I would say, um, did you ever have a hamster? Do you remember those little hamster balls that the hamster could sit inside and it could see out, but if you had a cat, the cat couldn't get to it. Do you guys, um, have you ever seen those before, those little hamster balls? And I would say, put that voice, that comparing critic, inside that little hamster ball and say, shh, it's not your turn to talk right now. And I said, you know, there's a time when it's important to listen to that but right now is not the time. So we're just gonna put that little critical voice inside that little hamster ball and set it aside over here and go ahead and read your beautiful work that you created. Um, and a lot of that is just, then we become bolder, we become braver, we become comfortable in the group. We find that indeed we can have a chance to speak. And um, I've had many, many times when people were in my writing groups and they were the ones who said, you know, I can't write, I can't do this, I can't. And then they've gone on to publish their books over a period of time. And it's just delightful because I really do believe that inside of us, we all have wonderful awesomeness. And we just haven't had a chance to let it come out. We haven't had the opportunity. Does anybody else have uh, any questions? This is really, this is really neat. And I really appreciate all of you being here for me too. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I think that creativity is really important in too is it gives us a chance to allow beyond our out loud words. Um, if you've, you know, rolled with me for a while, you probably will have heard me say that. Um, sometimes I just don't have the words to express things, but if I get behind an instrument 
and I can be that hollow reed. I can be that vessel coming from the heart. If you believe in God or spirit or the universe, you know, I mean, allowing that to come through us, that spirit, that beauty, um, a lot of times we will see that. Um, in one of my classes uh, that I had with people who had cancer, um, one lady came in, she'd been playing the native flute for quite a while, and she, it's a, basically an easy instrument to where you don't have to learn you know, to read music or anything. And um, uh, once you can play it, it's it's really a powerful instrument because you can play it with, you can play it from the heart, which is what I teach. But anyhow, this one lady came in and I said, hi, Grace, how are you today? And she picked up her flute and she played this, a few notes. I picked up mine and I played it back. We carried on a whole conversation in the notes of the flute and totally understood what each other was saying. And later she said to the class, she said, I was just too tired to speak, so I let the flute speak for me. And that's a really powerful thing. It's a powerful thing to be able to let our creativity speak for us when we can't find the words. Anyone else have any questions? Or I'll just keep talking for a few more minutes. And um, I know different people have different things going on. So... Thank you, Edwina. Um, also, how many of you have dreams? I'm sure, I mean, I know everybody dreams, but I've heard people say I don't remember my dreams. But the dreams are symbolic, and they actually come from a, the symbolic part of our brain. And playing music or art or writing from the heart, not as an intellectual exercise, but as an exercise of expression is symbolic and can actually teach us about ourselves. Um, we can be writing a story and in that story, we learn a lot about ourselves. And that's one of the things that um, I love to teach is about how we can use our own expression to help us figure out answers or find questions. You know, I just, I think that's really powerful, powerful work. Um, well, I really thank everybody for being here today. I know everybody has lots of things that you're probably doing too. And thank you for stopping and coming and joining me. Deanne, uh, I think it's awesome that your daughter got that part in the play. I love that she dyed her hair pink and um, she got that part. That's wonderful. And I'm really impressed that you as her mom are just encouraging her. I think that that's a really important thing too is encouraging our children. And I know that times have changed. I know that we're not living in a time when um, parents are necessarily saying get a real job. But my father saying that, um, that was a really big issue for me for a long, long time. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. And I think that as parents, allowing our children to find their voice in creativity is really vital. And um, this one thing I like about in our culture today that I think is changing is that many times parents aren't necessarily trying to force their children into a certain modality, but they're allowing them to find their voice. Not all, but I've, I've seen it. I see it in my children, um, of course, you know, but uh, I see them working to allow their kids to have their own voice. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. I really appreciate your being here. Hope you have a great, great day, and uh, I'll look forward to watching you guys in your Facebook Lives, too. Bye-bye now. Aw, thanks, Deanne. Oh, you dyed your hair blue. Oh, I love that. Oh, well, she's, you know, that saying the apple, what is it? The um, acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. I love that. I love watching her grow. Good for you. She's lucky to have you. All right. Bye, my friends. Bye-bye.